Hey everyone, today we're going to be using the Baby Lock course to demonstrate how the auto secure and auto cut feature works and how your stitches are going to behave when you activate those features. Um, so we're going to zoom into the screen and then talk about our physical buttons here because they are all tied together. Okay, so when we turn our machine on we ha can have it go to the straight stitch on the left or in the center and uh, on default it goes to the center and that's going to be 1-3. And 1-3 has a picture of a straight stitch with a dash mark that looks like that at the beginning. So if we have our auto secure on and we have 1-3 on because that little dash mark, that means it's going to do a few stitches forward, go backwards, and then go right into normal stitching afterwards. If we go into 1-4, it has a little dot and then normal stitches, which means it's going to do baby stitches super close together and then do a regular stitch. So before you even turn on your features to do auto secure and auto cut, you need to pick how you want to begin your stitch. And for our example, we're going to do the forward backwards one, so we're using 1-3. To activate auto secure, we're going to click this button on our screen. On some of the machines like the Baby Lock Soprano, it'll be a hard button over here next to your screen that gives you all the information for what it's doing. Then down here is auto cut. We cannot have auto cut on, um, but not auto secure. So if you click on the cut, it'll turn on both features at the same time. Now that we know how to identify how we start our securing method, which is the tacking in place or going forward backwards, we have the same options when we're going to end our stitch and those are done on demand. So let's say you make a mistake and you need to rip. Well, you don't want it to secure because that just makes it harder to rip. So you would click the scissor button to avoid the securing process. If we wanted to do a forward backwards, we would touch our reverse button. And if we wanted to tack in place, this circle button here. So no matter how you start your stitch, you can end any of those three methods. The last bit that you need to know is inside your foot, you want to have it completely covered by fabric where the needle goes in and out of your presser foot because if it's not fully covered and you start securing it can cause a jam so that's known in the sewing world as a needle drop so once that's completely covered by fabric we can go ahead and start sewing so forward backwards and then we go to the end of our square And then if you're using a general pressure foot, because the opening of the needle drop is a little wide, it can catch on the foot. So you always want to stop to do your securing method before you exit the fabric. So if you get a little too close or pass it, that's why we'd want to push the scissor if you pass the fabric. If you're right at the edge and are still on fabric but you don't want to do the forward backwards, we can tack again. Or if you're going to be able to go backwards and not catch on your fabric, we can do this. And it'll go through the whole process on its own. Ta-da! For those who are new to sewing, securing your seam is very important, especially if you need to manipulate the fabric a lot while you're getting it into your project. Because every time you touch your fabric, turn, pick it up, press, and anything, you can actually pop your seam if you don't secure. I've lost all my first quilts due to me not securing properly. And that was really, really annoying. So securing on demand is a great feature for you to know how to use properly to enhance your creative life. Stay tuned for more videos on how to use your baby lock and other kinds of machines because we hope to do quick tidbit videos like this a lot more often.